We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are Amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. We are the Beer Amigos. Travis. And this is Mike. And we are the Beer Amigos. And we are at the Hops and Props Craft Beer Festival at the Cradle of Aviation Museum in Garden City. Mike, it's February 8th, 2014, isn't it? <laughs> You're damn right it is. <laughs> it's kind of cold outside. Mike's uh, nipples are kind of hard. but uh, so cold outside. I'm, I'm over winter, man. I'm warming them up. Yeah, spring's on the way. But we're here. We're about to conduct a bunch of great interviews. We're looking forward to them. Yeah, we are. And friggin' Hops and Props sounds like a great song, so we're going to drop some beats. Oh, yeah. We are here with Joe, this very seasoned representative of the Brooklyn Brewery. Um, Joe is a familiar face that we always enjoy seeing, um, and we're obviously super pumped to see you here today. Um, Joe is pouring two beers that we haven't seen, as far as I know, at a festival yet. So perhaps you could give us a little insight as to what you have and give us a little background on those beers. Sure, absolutely. Uh, the first beer, well, first of all, it's great to be here with you guys. Thank you. Beautiful venue, kind of different, a, a beer festival in a museum. Beautiful sombreros. Yeah, with beautiful <laughs> sombreros. I wish I had one, but I don't. But uh, we have Brooklyn Blast on draft. Uh, we usually don't bring it to beer festivals, but... Uh, since we kind of done our expansion in Brooklyn and we can pump out more of it now, we can share it with more people, which is kind of nice. And uh, I, I don't like to use the term double IPA, so let's say it's a big IPA. It's about 8.5% alcohol, eight different hops in it, four from England and four from the U.S., uh, but you still have that nice malt backbone to it that keeps it balanced. It's a revolutionary L. <laughs> <laughs> and the other beer we have, we just released, it's our, it's our spring season, all dry Irish stout. Um, you know, roasty, malty, four and a half percent. I, I like to call it session stout. Yeah, if, I like that too. <laughs> if such a thing exists, absolutely. I just had that, and I was like, I was like, I like this, but I had been drinking so I guiltily been drinking some bigger beers earlier. So, um, but I could absolutely get behind that, where you're just like, you know what? Like St. Patty's Day is coming. No, let's, totally. let's well, you know, we have big stout. Yeah, black chocolate stout if you if you want that imperial stout. Oh, so but good. you know, this is a little bit more for the masses. Right. But um. Yeah, if you want to bring the noise, then you go black chalk. Bring the <laughs> funk. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's that's great to see those here. Um, people having some beers that they haven't necessarily tried at all, or at least you know you're rolling out the Irish Stout. It's kind of cool. I mean, festivals are fun for that reason. You get to have beers that aren't available to you um, regularly necessarily, but you know it's nice to try a beer without having to commit to a, a, a full you know four or six pack. Um, I know that we discussed this a little bit earlier, but the blast is available in a four pack. Um, how is the stout distributed? Is it exclusively tap, or is it available in bottle? Uh, no, stout's available in uh, six packs, also draft in six packs. Blast is fairly recent. We just put it in bottles, four pack bottles, and uh, we're excited. We just added a 12 ounce bottling line in Brooklyn, nice. and that's our first 12 ounce beer that we're doing. And uh, we got some other things that we're working on later this year. We're going to release a, a session saison. So kind of go, instead of a session IPA like everybody else is doing, yeah. we're going to do a session Saison, and we're bottling that in Brooklyn. That'll probably be released sometime in May. So it's kind of cool. You have the bottling line in there. You can experiment with different things. We didn't really have that luxury before. Um, just from a curiosity standpoint, I mean, you know, one way or the other, um, sessionable Saison, uh, farmhouse sales tend to typically be a little bit lower, you know, in alcohol. Um, what was really the mentality behind, you know, choosing to do a sessionable saison you know it really came about we were looking we do a lot of business in sweden as you guys know we're building a brewery in sweden right now um and in the sweden market you have to be below a certain abv content to be available in their supermarkets so that's kind of how it came about so we did some test batches and you know ipa 
traditionally IPA are supposed to be strong beers. We know the stories of IPA, they had to survive the journey. So a session IPA, it's almost like creating a new style. So we said instead of following what everyone else is doing, you know, we brewed this session saison. It was first called Oishi, which means delicious in Japanese. And uh, we used a sriracha hop in there, a couple of different hops, something a little bit different, and uh, something that started for our market in Sweden. We were kind of happy with it. We feel like there's a market for it in the U.S., and uh, you'll see it probably in May. Very right, cool. That's exciting. I mean, craft beer is very much, you know, as much as, as against the grain as possible for, you know, no pun intended. But um, it's just nice to see the, the evolution and, like, you know, kind of, like you said, everyone's going session IPA, which is very contradictory in a sense because, you know. Not that there's anything wrong with oh, it. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Because, I mean, we're guilty of liking, you know, some of those beers without a doubt. But uh, traditionally, it's, it's kind of against the grain where you're like, well, that's not my expectation when I drink an IPA. But, uh, again, those beers are great um, segue and introductory IPAs and that of that style for people that might not be into that. Like, for me, I was not necessarily a big hop person. Uh, that's more of Travis's forte. So that's nice. You know, for me, I'm very much into that now. I'm drinking double IPAs like a lunatic. And... Uh, that wasn't the case before, so there's there's a great it's there's a great purpose for those beers, and um, from an introductory standpoint, if you're not a hophead, that's maybe the way to go. Saisons are great. I mean, you know, they're they're typically traditionally made for they're brewed for the summer primarily. You know, the, the hot days where you would quench your thirst, but also get you know maybe a little bit maybe a little bit buzz after a while. Um, so that's nice to see that. You know, what's amazing is you see as, as breweries are coming out with these lower ABV beers, how much flavor you can actually pack in there. Because you see three and a half, four percent, you're not expecting something that's so full flavored. And when you taste it, I mean, it's unbelievable. I always think of the barrier on Imperial IPA. I don't know if you've had that. Yeah, I have. Not in a while, but... So, so flavorful. I think it's four, four and a half percent alcohol. It's delicious. And again, I mean, that's that's part of the crafting process. It's not just like, okay, like, let's brew a beer, and it yeah. tastes like every other beer that is right, in this right. style. So, I mean, definitely a nod to what you brought today. Uh, you're also pouring some of the silver anniversary um, in celebration of your 25th anniversary in Brooklyn. Um, I know that the foundation of that beer is inspired by your flagship lager. Perhaps you could give us a little insight as to how that came to be. Sure. Last year, 2013, was our 25th anniversary, and uh, Brooklyn Lager was obviously the first beer that we ever did. So Garrett wanted to kind of do an you know, homage to Brooklyn Lager. So he brewed a, a lager, but the double Bach intensity. We did a little bottle re-fermenting. And 8.5%, uh, I like to call it Brooklyn Lager on steroids. steroids. And uh, we had four local artists do four different labels for it. Um, it's nice. It's something different. You know, it was a limited release. We have a little bit left. We're selling it through, and then it'll be gone. Obviously, we'll keep some for ourselves and bring it to festivals, share it with the beer amigos. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's like a beautiful thing to see at these festivals because, again, um, for a bigger bottled beer like that, you can taste it without committing to it. Um, so it's a great opportunity to share those beers um, with people that maybe don't even know that beer exists. Let's be honest about it. Um, so it's a beautiful thing to... You can do a lot of that tasting at the brewery if you come visit us one day, guys. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, I've actually been there plenty of times. <laughs> I've been as well, but... You know, that's that's a great point that, that Joe uh, just presented. I think Joe's saying if we don't show up in sombreros, we're basically just the average guy who is still appreciated. Yeah. But we need the sombreros to be the beer amigos visiting and Brooklyn let us Brewery. Know when you're coming in. Let us know when we maybe give you a little behind the scenes tour. I'd be more than happy with that. We're like we're here with Joe when he sent us. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. That that would be great to get that uh, that personalized tour from a you know, great representative of the Brooklyn Brewery. Sure, Brooklyn Brewery always goes hard, and uh, we appreciate them, and we appreciate Joe. So we look forward to, to more coming out, you know, blast, and, blast Irish Stout and going forward. So thanks for your time, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers. We're here with Rich from the Greenport Harbor Brewing Company. Um, they have a lot going on out there, other than brewing amazing beer always. But um, I know your expansion is underway. Um, perhaps you give us some, uh, an update as to where you are with that. Certainly, I like your scepter. Um, so we are actually very close. I'm, I'm really excited, totally pumped, because we're um, going to be receiving the 
balance of our brew house and all the other vessels by the end of February, first part of March. So we're within 30 days of actually plugging things together and firing things up. Um, we'll be test batching through March, and we're going to start brewing beer by mid-April. And um, really excited about that, and the bottling line's following that. And uh, by Memorial Day, June 1st-ish, we'll have the tasting room open over there. So, yeah. We're really Perfect excited. time for the warm weather. Yeah, absolutely exciting stuff going on out there. Um, what can we expect from you in regards to reach? You know, how far are you guys looking to, to spread? We're, uh, you know, the key is to make sure that we're servicing everybody that's our core market on the island and in the city. Um, one of the trickiest things that we had happen to us last year was we pretty close ran out of beer several times in some of our seasonals. So the, the first thing that we're just like can't wait to accomplish is making sure we have enough beer to service everybody in the New York market. With the bottling that we're bringing online, we um, can respond to a lot of the requests that we're getting from Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey to move into those markets. Um, not that that's going to happen this year, but we're really excited about the added dynamic of bottling and what that will allow us to do and what those additional markets are that we'll be able to go into there. So. Maybe you could give us a, a little teaser in regards to whether you're going to offer, uh, I mean, if this part has even been discussed. I mean, I'm sure it has to some degree. If you're going to offer four, six packs, bomber style. Yeah, I think we're, we're uh, the, uh, the game plan right now, and you're right, we haven't completely, you know, thought it through yet. But the, the, the game plan is to do six packs, three styles as our initial release. Um, is the other side going to be in there? You know, we're actually toying with the idea of canning the other side. So uh, just because we think uh, an IPA in a can is a, is a, yeah. is a better delivery system. So, um, but, you know, summer is probably going to be either in bottles or cans. Um, and then probably subject to exactly when we launch, it'll be a seasonal in a bottle, probably the Harbor, probably the Black Duck Porter as well. So, um, yeah, it's going to be six packs. We don't really envision the four pack thing. Um, you know, we think we'll try and price accordingly. We really believe in the value of a six pack we're not necessarily totally caught up in the whole four pack thing for 15 bucks you know yeah, understandable it was just more of a, a curiosity standpoint give a give our listeners a little inside information yeah. um so obviously the system you have is conducive to canning as well because that's something you brought up actually uh, we're actually looking at doing a remote canning operation bringing a, a remote canner in because for us we think as much as we would love to have a bottling and a canning line we're not new belgium so we can't afford both uh, but we would love to bring in, um, and we've talked to a couple of real reputable mobile canning systems that, have, that have, we've heard thus far really great feedback on that would allow us to do canning for seasonals. And we think the summer would be an awesome time for beach and boating out there yep. to have a summer can as well as an IPA moving into the fall. So we want to try and integrate both. Um, you know, it's all just kind of sometimes wish list things yeah. and you know it's kind of fluid in terms of the decision making and what we're going to be able to do but we do think it's a priority whether it actually happens this year in terms of doing a can and a bottle at the same time it's certainly going to be something on the horizon going forward right well we definitely seen some success with that locally you know whether it be the brooklyn the brooklyn summer was really like their kind of their first big beer that they rolled out in cans and we've seen it with you know the heady toppers and, and even founders has done their their sessionable all day ipa in that um Oscar Blues, pretty much everything is in cans. So, I mean, there's obviously the demand for it, and it's, you know, it definitely plays a part with a lot of, like, the summer parks and so on and so forth. Like, you mentioned the boating and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So that puts you in the position to be available um, for not only sale at certain outlets, but also consumption, you know, whether it be the uh, the consumer bringing it with them to wherever they're going. Yeah, exactly. um, so th that's absolutely, uh, and the other shot IPA is is definitely in that wheelhouse of beers that people are going to want to bring with them to drink whatever. I you already know. want to bring with yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> it's already brought. <laughs> I'm getting thirsty just talking about it. Yeah. I ordered a case already right now on the sly uh, for sale. No, um, but that's that's absolutely exciting, and I know that we're looking forward to that because you're you're one of our favorite breweries uh, at the local level. I, mean, I love what you guys do you. for the industry, you know, and it's really exciting, and it's really. I know it becomes cliche, but, you know, it's, it's just so awesome to be part of an industry, especially a Long Island industry and, and this industry in a, as a whole, where there's such a great vibe in terms of everybody getting along and, and everybody being really excited about what the other guy's doing and the right. success. So we've been really lucky that way. Um, you know, 
And the other thing being said, you know, we're, we're excited about bringing on the brew pub there at that location with a beer garden. And we're kind of in the middle of the wine trail out there. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, like, uh, upside to what we are hoping to do and expecting to do. Not to mention, which I will mention, but, uh, you know, we planted malting barley across right. the street. we got four acres of that in the ground. So we're really excited about continuing to cultivate the... The full New York's, you know, yeah, green. Actually, yeah, I don't mean to interrupt you. When we interviewed you guys at the Blue Point Cascales Festival, you said you were interested in doing the first 100% that's right. Long Island that's beer. Right. So that's still that's still, still the plan? Yeah, I, you know, as re- I won't say as retarded as I am, but as, uh, you know, challenged as I can be about, you know, yeah, that's still the hope. And that's we're, uh, we're uh, hopefully it'll grow. You know, it's planted. It sprouted about three inches before the winter snows came. So we're really hoping that it's going to take off. And I'm really hoping to start to kind of cultivate additional farming kind of collective, small plot, you know, kind of invigorating that. So, yeah, we're really excited about that. That's great. I mean, it's on the board, so that's absolutely exciting. Uh, like you said, it's in the ground, and it's it's, ground, yeah. it's making its way. So, I mean, that's all you could ask for. As you know, whether you whether you're growing in your backyard or you know you're growing large scale, you're going to do what you can to control the environment as much as possible. But at the end of the day, uh, when it's there, it'd be great to see it in the finished product. Um, I'm always excited to see what you guys are doing. Um, I think everyone needs to put on their uh, their big boy pants and head out to Greenport Harbor, yeah. even though it's winter and their hours are a little bit more limited because obviously it's far less tra- far less traffic out there. It's a beautiful drive, though. Yeah, but but make that happen and uh, and visit these dudes because they're phenomenal. Please but- do. And if you and if you can't make it out this winter. Put on your calendars to plan to come out in July when we celebrate our fifth anniversary because we are going to have one mother effer kind of a hoedown out there at the new location. So. Oh, I'm there. Greenport Harbor doing it all day, every day. We look forward to talking to you in the near future, Rich. Thanks for your time Thanks. as always. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Hey, this is Ethan from Claire Rose, and I'm at the Hops and Props Beer Festival with the Beer Amigos. Happy birthday, Ethan. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, bro. Happy birthday to you. Woo. Happy birthday, 34, buddy. baby. 34. Yeah. We are here at the Hops and Props Festival uh, in Garden City at the Aviation Museum. Um, we're here with Mark from Single Cut. Beersmiths. That's right. Um, we just met this gentleman. He's a bearded fellow like myself. He also likes stouts and long walks on the beach. But uh, let's talk about his beer because that's really what people care about, not me taking long walks on the beach. Um, we just found out, actually, that Single Cut will be distributed by Claire Rose uh, and making their way out on Long Island. So, Mark, perhaps you could tell us how that came, you know, came to be and uh, what you're excited about regarding that. Yes, very excited. I love long walks on the beach. <laughs> and, and men with uh, mustaches. Men with mustaches and beards. So, Claire Rose, yeah, we're super stoked. We've been uh, self-distributing in the city. And every once in a while, bringing kegs out ourselves, out to Long Island. But it became a little cumbersome, so we started looking around. Claire Rose, Rose to the Top, they are an amazing company. We're really excited to be with them, and we'll be sending them some brews very, very soon. So, yeah, just really stoked to be out in Long Island now. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're pumped to just add accounts, you know, have the ability and opportunity to add more accounts and get your beer to more people, because at the end of the day, that's why you're brewing beer, right? I mean, you know, what the hell? Um, so that's exciting. I mean, and Claire Rose has a great rapport distributing the likes of Blue Point, um, Long Ireland, and Great South Bay. So uh, that's a good company for you to join uh, on your way out here, and I know that we're looking forward to that. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your brewery and, uh, and what you guys are brewing uh, that you know, we could potentially look forward to seeing on tap. Yes, yeah, so Single Cup Beer Smiths, we do a lot of different types of beers. We actually have lagering tanks at our brewery. So we do a Pilsner, we do a wheat lager, we've done a dark lager, and we've done a sour lager. So we like to experiment with what a lager can be. In today's world, in our country, a lot of lagers are looked down upon kind of watered down, kind of cheap beer. So we kind of took the extra step to get the lagering tanks, big horizontal tanks, and let our lagers age. And we try to make full-bodied, really interesting lagers, something that you've probably never had before. So we do a wheat lager with Szechuan peppercorns and matzo meal and orange juice. And just really try to get funky with it. Um, But on top of that, we do a lot of hoppy beers. So a lot of our IPAs are... Uh, loaded with dry hops. Um, yeah, what's that beer? It has Billy in the name, right? Am I correct there? So yeah, yeah, we That's do a good one. We we do a couple actually. There's a, a series of IPAs called the Billy right, okay. series. <laughs> so we do the Billy 18 watt. That's the one. Is, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. It's delicious. Five percent dry hopped, 
delicious, light body, but a ton of aroma hops. Then we do the Billy Half Stack, which we have here tonight. It's 6.6%, and a little more malt quality, a little more hop quality. And then we do our Imperial IPA, the Billy Full Stack. So the names reference guitar amps. The bigger the amp, the bigger the beer. Keeps in line with the single cut theme, which is rock and roll and guitars. Those are your tap handles as well, right? They're guitars, the next to the guitar? Yeah, so single cut, the name actually refers to a body style of electric guitar. And everything we do at the brewery, we, we are all big fans of rock and roll, classic rock. We have our vinyl collection on display, and we're always spinning classic rock. And we have a stage, so we do uh, live performances there. We have drum set, guitar amps, everything, you name it. So we're really into the music, really into the beer. We just tried to combine our passions, and people have been really digging it. So I'm thinking the Beer Amigos may have to come down and do a live set. <laughs> yeah, I mean, beer and rock and roll is, is sexy as hell. So, I mean, I want to rock the shit out of that. So <laughs> that's super exciting to hear. Um, and I definitely know, obviously, that's something that speaks to, you know, people everywhere. If you don't like music and or beer, you're pretty much the worst human ever. So you <laughs> should just yeah. you just check out early. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know you. That's yeah. Sure. You will not be on the staircase to heaven. We know that for sure. More so the highway to hell. <laughs> but uh, that's that's awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to definitely you being present on some taps out here. Um, and do you have you know more intent of being involved in just beer events that are going on in Long Island? Yeah, definitely. We're uh, we're gonna try and get uh, our faces out here. I want to get to know all you fine Long Islanders a little better. So I spend way too much time in the city. So. I like the space, the open roads. It's good for me. It's a, it's a little country-ish. <laughs> <laughs> and now if anyone's venturing out to your area, where exactly are you guys located and what are your hours? So we are on um, 1933, 37th Street, which is also the name of our Pilsner, the 1933 Queens Lager. And it's between 19th and 20th Avenue. So kind of north Astoria, uh, right near the Steinway factory. Um, and we are open Thursday through Sunday. So check out the website, singlecupbeer.com for live shows, hours, and other kind of events. We do pop-up markets there. We really get the community involved with a lot of different stuff. So It's it's that easy. Just just put that into your little internet and, and look that up. Um, in regards to, I'm, I'm pretty psyched about this LP spinning you're talking about. Is that very much done internally with employees, or is it like kind of the community brings in records to share? Mike's basically asking if he could bring his uh, Prince Purple Rain album next time you guys do that. You can definitely bring your Prince Purple Rain. We will, because you're now friends with Single Cup Beer Smith, uh, we are all amigos. We will allow you oh. to spin a record or two. It's very gracious of you. Subject I to our approval, of course. Oh. <laughs> well, I assure you that I listen to amazing rock and roll. <laughs> um, but I also, I am also a sucker for the classic Motown style. Uh, you know, we got to mix it up. You got to diversify it. That's right. You know, no, you know, it, it, like our beer palettes. You got to diversify it. Reach out, find new things that you like, share with friends. I mean, Mike knows I'm all about the glam metal for some yeah, reason. Yeah, music and beer. I feel like there's a very common, you know, commonality there that people don't necessarily acknowledge or are aware of. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than being like, dude, I just, you know, I got this album or. You know, check this song out and share it with your friend. It's like that with beer when you have a beer that you're excited about, exactly. and you put that in your and one of your friends. You're like, dude, you need to drink this, and they have it, and they're like, my mind is blown. You yeah. changed my you changed my world, and you helped me evolve my ear slash palate, depending on which one you're referring to. That's so, right. super awesome to get to talk to you. I definitely want Trav and I to come out and uh, and visit you yes. without a doubt. Always welcome. Drop me a line, guys. Awesome. Good stuff. Thanks for your time, Mark. We're here with Pete from Homebrews and Hand Grenades out of Ooh, Baldwin, yeah. New York. Um, Pete, man, you're here pouring some homebrews, you know, showing people what they can do in the comfort of their own home. What you can brew in your draws, essentially, is what's going on. Uh, maybe you can tell us what you have today and uh, a little bit about your store. Well, uh, I'm, I didn't do it in my draws, but I, def <laughs> I definitely did it in my store. Uh, hey, Ron. I got, a, a pale, I got a pale wheat going on. I did that in my store. It's a pretty pretty simple recipe, you know. It's just uh, ex exhibiting how uh, easy it is to just uh, make your own beer in your own, in uh, your own facility and to brew your favorite beer at home. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely an opportunity for for people to 
to reach out and, and with, whether it's through like a cologne kit or like you know just learning about home brewing in general it's a great opportunity to learn about beer learn about beer styles which I feel like is a great opportunity in the craft beer you know whether you're you know you're a novice beer drinker and you're just trying to find out what you like um, beer styles is a is a huge opportunity and I know that's something that you probably focus on in your stores am I am I correct Pete? Absolutely. Look, I like when when people come in and and they want to make beer, I always ask them, what is their favorite style of beer? And when people conclude what their favorite style of beer is, I always try to like gear towards their preference. To me, it's like I like making a, a multier style of beer, so I, I always tend towards the multier style beers. But if somebody wants to come in and they want to do like a Double IPA? Double IPA. <laughs> I always bend it towards their style. Right, right. That's, that's what it's all about with home brewing. Making stuff that, like, really gears towards you. And what you want to drink, essentially. Yeah, I mean, if you're passionate about what, what styles you drink, you're obviously going to be passionate, most likely, about brewing that at home. You're going to want to recreate your favorite beers or, you know, inspire what you're brewing based on your preferences. You're not going to brew a beer that... A beer style that you hate, like, I mean, unless you're an idiot, like, (laughs) I mean, you basically want to drink the beer styles you like, so, I mean, that's great. What kind of stuff do you offer at your store besides, like, the, you know, the most, like, basic forms, like, what, why should I shop at Home Brews and Hand Grenades? I have, like, a big variety of uh, grain and also yeast, too. I know, like, yeast is really important with uh, home brewers because, you know, there's different, like, uh, this, this is, like, a huge amount of varieties out there, so I try to carry those big varieties out there. Same thing with hops. I have like 46 variety of hops in my store. An eclectic mix of uh, ingredients. Yeah, there's so much like niche brewing in general and like people that are inspired by beers that have specific hop styles in them. So of course everyone's going to want to do it yourself like, you know, you know, choose your own adventure and uh, and try to replicate that, that taste or, you know, furthermore evolve that taste, not only for their personal preference and palate, but, I mean, the fact that those hops are available to them is, is a great attribute because, I mean, like you said, it's not something that you can get, like, everywhere without a doubt. And I know you guys do, you do a homebrew bottle swap, right? Yes. So absolutely. tell us a little bit about that because I feel like that's a good opportunity for people. Say, say for instance, they get their ingredients elsewhere. But um, this gives them an opportunity to share what they're brewing at home with other customers. So tell us a little bit about that homebrew bottle shop, uh, sorry, homebrew bottle swap that you have at Home Brews and Hand Grenades, and when that is. Well, uh, generally I usually do that like the second Thursday of the month. The thing that I like about it is that like you get like novice homebrewers that just started homebrewing, and, ca- and pretty much they catch up with people that, that are like old hands at it. So... They, they bounce off ideas from, like, the, the old, I guess, the old school home brewers and just learn the things, like, like the hiccups that older home brewers, like, went through. Right. I think, you know, like, as a home brewer, I love to give, like, information, you know, stuff that, that like, I went through. Yeah, feedback. Tri- yeah, trial yeah. tribulations and stuff like that. Positive criticism. <laughs> yes, that too. And uh, it's like, I don't want you to go through that because it was... It was arduous, it was terrible, and I, I, I've burned through that, and I don't want you to go through that, so don't do this, that, and that. You know, it's just, just passing your knowledge. That's yeah. what it's all about. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, and any opportunity to gain knowledge, you know, I mean, gain knowledge through... Did you say, did you say grain I knowledge? Say, I did say grain knowledge. <laughs> I mean, any opportunity to grain knowledge <laughs> through um, any sources externally of blogs, which, you know, could be great because you have your go-to blogs and just online sources, but just, you know, learning from people that have kind of experienced that, have, you know, gone from novice to, you know, very seasoned brewers, I mean, those are the people you want to learn from. And and it's, that's what, it, I think that's like the best part about the process is it's kind of like, you know, a club of, of people that appreciate beer, you know, appreciate the fact that you appreciate it and they just want to help you improve your skill set. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's just about enjoying yourself. If you're not having a good time, then what the hell's the point, right? You can visit Pete at 2378 Grand Avenue. Wow, how do you know that? That's impressive. I'm very intelligent. Your world of knowledge, Mike. In Baldwin, New York. Um, perhaps you could share your hours and a website if uh, that is something people could explore prior to coming in. Absolutely. The, uh, the website is uh, brewgrenades.com. 
our hours, uh, yeah, Tuesday through Saturday, it's um, 12 to 7, and Sunday, it's 12 to 5. Very cool. Catering to everyone, regardless of where you work, you can get down there. Uh, learn about home brewing. Meet some cool people. Pick up some Beer Amigo stickers. Absolutely. Tell Pete the Beer Amigo sent you, and uh, we look forward uh, to hearing good things. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Anytime. Hey, guys. This is Matt from Best Wings Long Island. I want you to come down this February 22nd to Winter Wings and Beer Fest in Rockville Center at Cannon's Blackthorn. $20 tickets at bestwingsli.com for 30 ounces of beer and 15 wings. That's 15 wings and 30 ounces of beer. <laughs> Rewind. 15 wings and 30 ounces of beer. Get your tickets in advance and save money from the door. Thank what time does that start? 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah! That wraps up another fine episode of the Beer Amigos, obviously live from the Hops and Props Festival. And we do want to thank Eric Bell for inviting us and having us here at the Hops and Props Craft Beer Festival. Yeah, it's very kind of him. He's a, he's a heck of a guy. Hey, this is Travis from the Beer Amigos, and I want to take another opportunity to sincerely thank Eric Bell and everyone involved in the Hops and Props Craft Beer Festival for having the Beer Amigos down there to podcast live for all of you. Eric was extremely generous, extremely easy to work with. He was a great guy, and he put on one hell of an event. So once again, thanks to Eric Bell and everyone involved in the Hops and Props Craft Beer Festival. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. We look forward to reporting to you next episode. And as always, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thebeeramigos, Instagram at instagram.com slash thebeeramigos, Twitter at twitter.com slash thebeeramigos, or you can email us at thebeeramigos at gmail.com. Always the beer amigos, always. <laughs> so until next time. Adios, amigos. Thanks, thanks for listening. We are the beer amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are.